hi guys welcome to another video in this topic the it's about business processes we are talking about how to use uh, the uml in the business processes modeling the uml or universal modeling language is a way of visualizing a software program using a collection of diagrams that is perhaps the simplest way to define it. Uh, the UML has many advantages, including flexibility, an abundance of tools, and the capacity of model system for, from both a structural and behavioral perspective. And a focus on simplicity is therefore essential to not only creating actionable diagrams, but also to avoid pulling your hair out in, in the process. Before we uh, know a little bit about how to use the UML and the different UML diagrams, in the business processes modeling, is the act of documenting the series of steps and actions taken within a uh, business processes. That is the definition about business processes modeling. And this involves identifying the actors involved and the roles they play in the process, showing how the actors interact with each other uh, through the progression of various activities and providing a clear picture of the journey it takes through the organization. So why is keeping things simple important when using UML to model business processes? Maybe the short answer for this is that people reviewing and implementing the processes are not un unnecessarily confused and prone to misunderstanding information. This may seem obvious, uh, but the tendency for diagrams to get overwhelming and confusing is repeatedly cited as being a significant, a significant drawback of using UML. Thankfully, the application of UML in processes modeling is significantly, significantly uh, limited in how co complicated it, it can, can be in comparison to its application in software engineering developing. This is because UML has not originally created to model business processes it was purely a software development tool until it became apparent that a small set of diagrams, one in particular, can also be used to effectively model business processes. Using UML to align the work of software developers and business analysts has proven beneficial for product development. And the UML diagram has some uh, divisions or subdivisions. In this case, the two main types of UML di diagrams are in structural di diagrams and behavioral diagrams. In the structural diagrams, we know, for example, the class diagram, the deployment diagrams, the component diagrams, and object diagrams. And in the other hand, in the behavioral, the structural di diagrams, sorry, represents the static aspect of the software system. As the name suggests, they are focused on the system underlying structure. And in the other hand, like I said, is the behavioral diagrams. They visualize, specify, uh, construct and document the, the, the dynamic aspect of a system and of course we know the state machine diagrams, the communication diagrams, 
the use case diagrams, sequence diagrams, and of course the activity diagram. The activity diagram are also very popular and are just what we need to model in business processes because they are the only type of UML diagram that accounts for the flu of actions. Then the diagram most suitable for process modeling it's the activity diagram. The activity diagram also known as a swim lane diagram or cross-functional flowchart describes how a set of activities are coordinated to provide a service. It is the most suitable diagram for business process modeling as it nearly illustrates the flow of a process from activity to activity. It is essential to uh, it is it is essentially an advanced version of a flow chart making it an ideal tool to represent business flows and we show a table with the different uh, options of the diagrams that we have and how the process modeling are applying in some of them in this case activity diagrams cover more uh, needs in the process modeling. The three main benefits of activity diagrams it's the first one the activity diagrams are generally for less complicated than other UML diagrams making them easier for both analysts and stakeholders to fully comprehend. The second is the they allow an, an, an analyst to display multiple conditions and actors within a workflow through the use of swim lanes. And the third one is they have the ability to clearly describe the steps performed in a UML use case. And we have some basic components of the activity diagrams. The start node that symbolize the beginning of the activity represent by a black circle. Then actions, a step in the activity wherein the users of our software perform a given task represent by a rectangle usually with rounded edges. The decision node is a conditional branch in the flow that is represented by a diamond shape. It includes a single input and two or more outputs. The control flow is the connectors that show the flow between steps. These include connector roads the join symbol and the fork symbol. The end node symbolizes the end state of an activity and represents the completion of the processes. These elements of the basic components uh, you know in the explanation of the activity diagram. And the completed activity diagram uh, of the whatever uh, problem or processes of an organization that we want to represent, they have some steps to follow in the modeling processes applying the UML activity diagrams. The first one, or, or we, we can separate in two phases. The first one is the preparation and the second one is the creating the diagram. In the preparation we can determine the processes, identify the actors and list all activities tasks that need to be completed. And in the creating the diagram we need to name the start node and place it in the top left corner of the diagram. 
then insert the first activity the next step is beginning connecting activities with connector arrows placing fork and join nodes where necessary then we integrate decision and merge symbols where appropriate the next phase is to integrate outgoing incoming symbols where appropriate and the next one is to add annotations where we consider appropriate and the final step is to verify that the final activity completes the process or processes and connect it to the end node and that's it we know how to apply the uml diagrams in that case the activity diagram to represent a, a process or some process in an organ or in an organization or in a company or whatever processes and of course we have the bp B, bmpn or the business processing modeling notation that we saw a little bit about that other kind or other option to model uh, processes in in whatever business but in that part we have in the uml uh, in particularly in the activity diagram another option to model that kind of processes and that's it guys thank you for watching and remember probably UTR.